Well, Bob, this is splotted. Now mm. you've had a good look at it, are you repentant about poking fun at this place? Am I repentant, Bruce? <laughs> no, not at all. No, no, splot is Cardiff's own joke, not mine. Um, and I think splot's own joke, because I think it laughs at itself a great deal. No, I'm not repentant, because I think the comedian owes it to uh, whatever town he's working in to try and find out what makes that town laugh. And each area, each major city, develops its own jokes. It doesn't devise them, it doesn't invent them, that's up to the comedian. But it generates them naturally. For example, if you were working in Glasgow, you'd find that uh, Glasgow is already laughing at Kelvin's side for being terribly posh. It's already smiling at the Gorbals. If you get to Leeds, you find they're laughing at Chapel Town. If you get into Manchester, you find the people, the Mancunians themselves, find Moss Side funny. I suppose because a tremendous number of West Indians and Indians have settled in Moss Side, and the comedian will find, if they're laughing at it, then the audience will be delighted if he says, if you go into Moss Side after half past ten and you meet anybody, you say, hello there, white hunter. Now they find that funny because the comedian has invented a joke on a joke which already exists. Cardiff, I think, has been laughing at Splot very good-naturedly and very warmly for a long time, and it's the comedian's job to try and find a new way of continually entertaining them on the subject that they've already established as funny. But why do you think Splot is funny? Why does this area lend itself as material for a comedian? I don't know. I haven't laughed once since I came, Bruce. I suppose everywhere is funny. Just for sp oh, Splot. Splot is funny because the name was probably uh, inspired by the sound of a hen laying a scrambled egg. Probably that's why it's funny. Now let's get the record straight. What sort of things did you say about Splot or do you say about Splot in your show? <laughs> well, it was very slight, actually, Bruce. There's a spot in the show, or shall I say a splot in the show, uh, where I make reference to local places. And uh, there are many local places in Cardiff that are funny. King Coyd, the Beverly Hills of Cardiff, for example. The poshness of Penarth, where the seagulls fly upside down to keep it clean. Um, but with splot, I believe I, I described it as the gateway to the paradise of the sea. And I also may have said it was the plug hole of the Rhondda Basin, but I'm don't wish to be quoted on that. Now, did it surprise you that poking fun at Splot caused such a stir? Well, it did. I have a feeling that it's not the Splot citizen that, uh, that started the rumpus. I think they probably imported a troublemaker uh, just to... Uh, just to keep... <laughs> no, no, not really. Just one or two people are more sensitive in every town, and somebody got the needle and wrote in the letter. I don't think it's representative of general opinion, quite honestly. Everyone here seems very jolly. Now, I know you take this business of comedy, of humor, very seriously. In fact, you go to a great deal of trouble to find out what your audience is like. Now, can you divide Britain up into certain areas as far as appreciation of humor is concerned? Like, supposing a certain type of humor goes down well in the South, but on Tyneside, for example, it's taboo. Yes, that's, that has been true, less so now, because television has a tremendous leveling effect and brings a quite sophisticated entertainment into homes where it didn't exist before. Tyneside is an example of a place where 10 years ago it was a comedian's graveyard. You practically had to do mime in order to put jokes over. Today, with the nightclubs there, which are the most glamorous, I think, in the United Kingdom, you can do very fast, very flip humor. But just to come back, have we got time to come back to that? A joke about hanging somebody would be bad taste in Cardiff. If you said that the condemned man was in the cell, uh, the minister came in and said, I'm here to give you the last rites, and the condemned man said, I don't want to deal with the middleman, I'll be with your gaffer in the morning. No, this is not a good idea in Cardiff. It will offend and upset too many people who are sensitive to the whole subject of capital punishment. But it's still an okay joke in a naive or unaware community, say, way up in the north of Scotland or somewhere in, the, um, in Donegal. At the same time, are there certain types of jokes which are universal in their appeal, which are acceptable anywhere in the country? Yeah. Yes, has been for years. The battle of the sexes. Human beings find it funny from the age of three, Bruce. I think any joke, good joke, on the battle of the sexes is absolutely universal. That is, say, universal for every country as well, not just areas of the United Kingdom. Uh, the joke about the honeymoon couple who stayed up late to hear the arches. The joke about the boy who took his girlfriend out in the fog and mist. But let me quote you one. Wait a minute. The minister says, what ye sow, so shall ye reap. And afterwards, one of his parishioners says, you mean if I sow women, I'll reap women? Now, you give me the date of that joke, can you? 1735, it's in Joe Miller's joke book. So that joke's been going a long time, and it's still funny. The Battle of the Sexes, that's the, the universal touchstone of comedy. If everything else fails, bung that in. Now, talking about these areas of humor in this country, have you yourself ever dropped a clangor? 
plans to do oh, something in a certain place. Oh, yes, I, um, I, I got in the habit, whenever I did a private do for a firm or got into a town that I didn't know, getting out one of my postcard photographs and jotting down the facts on the back of it. And then I could conceal that in the palm of my hand, you see. Nobody would know. I was, they all thought I had jolly good memory. But of course, <laughs> you get hoist with your own petard on these things. I got somewhere, took down all my notes, stuffed it in my pocket, but when I went on the stage, I got the old card from last week and confidently went into a series of names and places which were a complete mystery. They were 200 miles away, all these other places. So I don't, I don't think, uh, I think it was Sunderland, I don't think Sunderland's ever quite forgotten a comedian standing there for five minutes, relentlessly cracking jokes about places they'd never heard of. And one of the papers reviewed my opening night and said, very offbeat comedy. <laughs> so they must have thought it was a brilliant new trend in satire. Bob, thank you very much indeed for coming down to Splot for us and the best of luck with your summer show here in Cardiff. Thank you very much, Bruce, and thanks for allowing me this opportunity of talking about comedy and talking right here in Splot. And to anyone living in Splot, if you've been offended by anything I've said, <laughs> tickle